Hello. Hello. This is our video that's going to talk about slavery a lot. So, <laughs> so buckle up. <laughs> like, um, so we've been, this was the one that we really worked on the longest. I, I feel like we started the script for this in the beginning like mm -hmm. basically like I, I think so one of the ironies of this whole thing is before we even had connected fully and I don't think we fully grappled with it yet but before we actually had found specific people that were that had been enslaved by our by our direct line we already knew that this book and the content in it had a lot of mentions of the mill and some mentions of the massacre at going snake and that was what kind of led us to that to that book and so originally it was very much a sort of secondary interesting source that kind of gave us some you know testimonies of people who had lived through the era and it was kind of interesting, but I, I think we need to reveal that our family received history about that, about slavery, when, as far as how, how much our family was participating in it, was incorrect. <laughs> like, and I suspect that's true for many people, um, and potentially quite a lot of, especially Cherokees, but also non-Cherokee people from kind of the West, is that, you know, if you're not from some area where, basically, I feel like if you're from west of the Mississippi, a lot of a lot of people really gloss over how much and how pervasive slavery was. They tend to blame slavery and and the and even joining the Confederacy on kind of you know, the billionaire class equivalent of the era, like people you would never meet if you were a regular person. And I think one of the things that this project really taught us is that you can't, you can't believe that. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And I, I think, especially for Cherokees, uh, we found a, a lot of other mentions where, you know, you don't get that many freedmen <laughs> without a lot of participation and so the irony is i don't think we would have found this this link if we hadn't been looking for more details about the mill mm -hmm. and it is interesting how many people in these narratives mention the mill specifically i'll even talk about how much they liked i was just reading one I, i'll open the book at random and find something there was a guy talking about how he when he was enslaved one of his favorite chores was to go and take corn to the mill to be ground because it was sort of a you know he had this errand to do and then it kind of took all day and so for him it was a kind of a light oh you know kind of a light day and he got to see the, you know got to go someplace and so a lot of people that mention the mill talk about it very warmly as this you know important gathering place for them um even you know, as they were, you know, surviving, uh, you know, in a terrible condition. So um, what we wanted to do with this particular video is uh, talk specifically about the first person we found that we could link to the general mill, um, whose name was Nancy Shepard. And then we want to dive a little more deeply into, um, unfortunately for our emotions, <laughs> the people that we found that were actually directly enslaved by our uh, direct line. Um, and so I think it's really important to explore those, those feelings and kind of how we didn't, I, it, you are the one who found it first and told me about it. And I remember being just really distressed by the, by the thought of that and um, kind of betrayed by my ancestors and my immediate family for not telling me and kind of, I think I recall being told, oh, our people were poor, like they didn't have slaves. And it's like, well, that neither of those things seem to have been true. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, one really interesting thing was is also been finding out uh, kind of how to find out more of this information. And we wanted to share that with other people because, uh, you know, we get a kick out of seeing uh 
you know, affidavits and details from our own ancestors' lives. And we hope that other folks might might benefit from that. So we wanted to share kind of open up that world because we recognize that knowing how to find this information and accessing it either for free or for very little money is is probably not exactly common knowledge yet. Um, you know, in the internet age, we kind of think to ourselves, everything's available to everybody. But some of this stuff is still pretty esoteric, especially when the records are from, you know, 1885. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start with Nancy Shepard. Uh, Laura, did you want to give a little more direction to, because you, you found this inf- the first tickles of this information first before I got into it. Yeah. Well, so how did you find that? Well, I, I don't remember exactly how I heard about it, but... Um... I do want to acknowledge that even before, even if, um, you know, for instance, Polly's parents hadn't been people who, you know, were par- like participating actively in the enslavement of other people, even without that, the wealth that um, Polly enjoyed and that her family benefited from was still predicated upon enslaved labor. So when they built the mill, the people who did the hardest work which is actually digging into the the bedrock of the stone there to build a, a sufficiently full trace for the mill to actually run. The, literally what powered the mill, that was all done by enslaved labor. And we don't know those people's names and we don't really know anything about them. But it's important to remember that even, even if our family had somehow been people who weren't participating in that directly, they still benefited from it directly. And so we, we've talked before about how, like, basically trying to completely opt out of that was was really difficult. Like, you can't <laughs> or it was really yeah. hard. There, there's this yeah. there's a small, notable handful of people who did, but they're notable. Yeah, because it wasn't a lot of people. And yeah. and they lived what were deliberately difficult lives. <laughs> yeah. You could be like a hermit in the woods, basically, yeah. to get yeah. Yeah. Completely, which which isn't an excuse, but it's just it's just kind of saying like even there were still levels of how much people benefited from from this labor. And so rec- recognizing that's really important. I, I don't remember the exact source. I, I think it could have been um, looking into like the part that I remember the most strongly is um, how during the Civil War, um, they moved everybody into a fort, basically to try to keep what they saw as their property from running away. And, you know, the, the privation of that time is really hard to overstate. I mean, like, the um, I, I now know a little bit more, too, about the kind of refugee camps that a lot of Cherokee went into during the Civil War, and it was terrible. But imagine how much worse it would be if you were also being held there against your will. Um, so, you know, it was really bad. And so, um, in particular, I saw there was a narrative from a, a woman who remembers how sad I think Polly's mother was to be separated from everybody. So, um, so I actually think that was Polly's mother in law. Okay. Um, okay. Cynthia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that would, that would make sense. But initially, when we first read that without further context, we thought that was Polly's mom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that. Yeah, that would be a reasonable assumption. Um, so, like that was the moment that I was like, "Oh, wait a minute," <laughs> you know. And well, then- and I think what's what, what's little, and we can talk about that a little bit later because um, that was Rochelle Ward. Yes, that's the one. So Rachel, we kind of noticed Rachel because of that, and what's interesting to me about it. Um, well, I'll talk about this later, but she, she, it, it, it made me, it, rem- it reminded me of the book, They Were Her Slaves, in which they talk about kind of this weird, there's a, there's a dynamic there uh, between women who were slave owners, who, 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 who were enslavers and they're enslaved that seem to be different than that between the men, um, and who were enslavers and their, and their enslaved people. And, uh, interesting. I was just reading this while I was waiting for you. Um, 
because I, I, it's a big book and it's got a lot of heavy material. So I, I, I can't sit down and read it in one go, but um, they were talking, one enslaved person was talking about when they're, you know, when the, the, you know, when the, their male enslaver would beat them, that the female enslaver, his wife couldn't stop him, but she would afterwards kind of doctor, you know, their wounds and, you know, maybe give them a little extra food that day or do something to kind of, you know, behave in an almost, you know, motherly way towards them. And there did seem to be, you know, whether or not that's kind of a version of Stockholm syndrome or not, but there did seem to be, um, while there's much evidence for, for women still behaving as Full, full on enslavers who were actually like, you know, using physical violence or the threat of it to control people. Um, many of these stories anyway, that have survived do include kind of this more intimate relationship um, with, with the, the woman, uh, with the wife. And uh, they talk about how Cynthia, they, they, you know, they didn't call her Cynthia, but they talk about how she cried when her in, uh, enslaved people were gathered up to go to the to the um, fort to be kept safe, <laughs> kept safe. And uh, they talked also about how she uh, she would help them make clothes, um, and she also would she was about to apparently come and write down all the children's names for them, but then she died. <laughs> Like, like right before she was supposed to come back and do that. So that's actually why I think it's Cynthia because of the year that this person said that she died. But anyway, so I'm getting ahead of myself on this. Um, and I, I just think it's really important. I, I also want to acknowledge that I'm doing my best, but I will occasionally, uh, because the documents I'm reading from often say slave and and, and even say owner, I'm, I'm trying to use proper kind of currently accepted language, which is an enslaved person, an enslaver, I, I will not always do that perfectly um, because, again, I'm kind of being influenced by these original documents, many of which, you know, include this very violent, you know, dehumanizing language. So I, I apologize in advance for that. Uh, I'm going to do my best. But I, and also we're not going to say the N-word and one of the things that's hard about reading the narratives is that the people providing their testimony use it incessantly. <laughs> like, and that's that's for them to do. It is not for me to read out loud. And even if I'm quoting, I will not, I'll just skip that part. And I that's not that's not my word. I'm not, I'm not qualified to say that word out loud. And if uh, as a, a descendant of those folks, if you if you want to uh, do an interesting and dramatic reading of this material, I rec, you know that that's amazing. Um, and I will say in the links below, we have included uh, for all of these materials uh, places where you can get this material for free on the internet. So I will often be showing like books and papers because that's honestly what it's more comfortable for me and I wanted the physicality of being able to you know bookmark and interact more with the material but especially if you're someone who is interested just in reading it uh, all of this stuff is actually available for free and we're going to tell you how to how to find it um, it's very important to me that this be something people can find as it's part of the point of doing this this whole thing subjecting ourselves to this conversation so uh, I think the most important thing, I want to start with Nancy Shepard because she was the first one we found. Um, and I think one important point I want to make is that it's so easy to say to yourself, and I've had people say this to me, well, you can't fix this. You can't do anything. You know, this was, you know, six generations ago. People kind of give themselves this helplessness about grappling with with slavery and there's a couple of things you can always do no matter what um you can educate yourself about the widespread contributions of enslaved people and their descendants to american society you know we, we talk about the infrastructure of the mill and how it wouldn't exist without that forced labor 
or it wouldn't exist in the format it does. That's a great analogy for pretty much everything, <laughs> everything here. Um, and this is often in spite of the majority culture's best efforts to make sure you didn't know that they did it. Um, especially if you love history, I think that goes double. If you love to dress up uh, in historic clothes, um, you kind of can't separate those clothes from people say to me, oh, I just love the material culture. Well, again, the material culture can't exist the way it did without all of that forced labor and all of that violence. So, I mean, you just can't separate those two things. And one thing that everyone can do who has an internet connection and therefore can watch this video is uh, consider becoming a citizen archivist and volunteering your time to the National Archives. Uh, you can do that online. It's not all, you know, you don't have to come to Washington, D.C. or go to one of the National Archives sites to do that work. You can sign up online. We've got the link below. And basically, uh, even if it's too hard for you to read the cursive, uh, you can check, you, cho you can choose to transcribe or tag documents that are typewritten. And a lot of these documents did get typewritten um, or transcribed in the typewriting in the 1920s and 30s. So, um, but it still takes a human to even read that and contextualize it. Um, but something that takes even more of a human is uh, if you want to take a step further and you have, you know, the privileges of time off during the week and, um, and you have, you know, the interest, you can also go to the Innovation Hub at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are going to do a short video about that, which we'll link in the chat or in the info box um, and talk about my my personal experience scanning army records there in October of 2023. And this is work that does take a person um, because your bare human hands need to be able to separate and gently manipulate these very old pieces of paper um, onto a scanner and uh, do a lot of, of hurry up and wait while the scanner does its part of the job. Um, <clears throat> So one more thing that everyone can do is actually ask questions about your received family history. Um, we we had no idea about any of this, uh, just like many, many people, I believe. Uh, we had kind of poked around previously on the family tree style websites. And those are interesting, but they're often run and populated by family history fandoms, not researchers. And they're also a big business, monetizing people's interest in who they are and adding layers to the veneer of inherited talent, importance, and nationalism is sort of what they do. We've got a deeper dive into genealogy research in another post. Um, so well, what did we decide to do about that, Laura? Um, what did we decide to do about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, our small contribution is this, interrogating the records themselves. Uh, we want to help increase the materials available to the public and comment on some of the differences we see in how these records were created. Um, for your comfort, of course, government records, of course, uh, created by the Dawes Commission in the course of their official business are generally available in the public domain and may be freely used. And we will have a link uh, where you can go to the National Archives and Records Administration, that's NARA, website um, about their copyright information for more information, but um, basically partly because they're government records and also because they're so old, they're pretty much for use. Yeah. And so we're going to, you know, flash up on bits of documents, but also give you the links to them. But just so you know, we're not, you know, violating anyone's copyright or stealing, uh, which is part of the, which would be very ironic. <laughs> in the in the slavery video 